Hello and thank you for watching the channel. Today I want to do a short video on heat sinking your NVMe drive. If you're interested in finding out what the difference is and how well it works, stay tuned for the rest of this video. Well, recently I did a video on a NVMe heat sink adapter for the PCI Express card. I'll put a link down in the description in case you want to check that out. And it raised a lot of questions and some controversy as to whether or not you really need a heat sink on NVMe boards. As you know, a lot of these motherboards also, um, especially the current motherboards, include heat sinks right on the motherboard. So when you mount the NVMe drive, you're basically mounting a heat sink on top of it. However, there's a lot of boards that don't have that. And many of you are using adapter boards and various other ways of you know, running your NVMe. So I just kind of wanted to go through some options in case you have the type of board that has the NVMe drive exposed and you want to get um, basically or potentially better performance and certainly um, better heat control on the device. So I want to kind of go over some of these. I'm not going to test them all because they're all basically perform about the same um, with a couple of minor exceptions. But I kind of wanted to go over some of the different devices available. Then we're going to sit down and do a um, quick test of using this plug-in card using a, a um, Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And we'll run it with without a heat sink, kind of in this configuration. Uh, we'll me measure the temperature as we're hitting a benchmark and as we're pounding it with some data. And then I'm going to apply one of these heat sinks on it and then we'll go ahead and go ahead and retest it uh, again and see what the difference is. See if there's any difference in performance and see if there's any difference in um, the temperature, the heat sinking. So before we get into that, I kind of want to go over some of the different options that are available um, just to kind of give you a better overview. And I'll have links to all this stuff um, in the description in case you want to check any of these out. Um, and these are obviously affiliate links. Um, these are all these products I bought myself and I use for on my own on my own systems. Um, but there are different types, a couple different types. They predominantly vary in size. So if you look at something like this, for example, as you can see, this one's considerably thicker. Um, therefore, it's going to provide slightly different heat sink characteristics. But the way it mounts and everything is very similar to um, something like this, for example, that's much thinner, you know, much lighter heat sink. And this is the one, by the way, we'll be using for our test reference because it's probably one of the thinner ones out there. So I kind of wanted to give you a baseline of worst case scenario. And then there are heat sinks like these, which are actually double sided where you have a heat sink both on the top of the SSD and on the bottom. The only issue with these, and I'll warn you now, is that not all motherboards or not all cards like this one provide enough room on the bottom for the clearance of the bottom heat sink. So if I look, and you probably can't see it very well through the video, but the clearance on the bottom of this board, primarily in this area here, um, I can't use a bottom heat sink on this. So Basically, we're going to look strictly at top heat sink solutions, which all of these are. They only come with a top heat sink. This is one of the few that has a bottom one. And if you have a, a, an SSD with bottom chips, you're going to need to use one of these. But those are becoming less and less frequent. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and, and mount this guy. I'm going to go ahead and first run this card, show you what the benchmark is like, and then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, mount this heat sink.
All right, now that we've run the test, let's go ahead and take this apart. And let's go ahead and mount the heat sink, pop it back into the card, and we're going to rerun that test um, using the same drive, the same card, um, with this heat sink applied. Now, the way these work, most of these are about the same, um, and you can use regular rubbing alcohol, but these come basically with a, um, a cleaner. So, And the primary reason for this cleaner is just to clean the stuff off the top of your... Uh, your um, SSD. Now I also want to comment on the labeling on the SSD. Many of the drives have a plastic label, some of them have a copper label. Um, they're all removable and all will void your warranty if you remove them. Um, if you want the maximum amount of cooling, you can go ahead and remove the label. I'm going to actually do this with the label on because I typically um, do not take the label off Samsung drives because they are thin copper on most of them. Um, and I don't believe it, um, I mean it does impact the, the temperature a little bit, but I would prefer to maintain the warranty on my drive. And as you see from the performance, uh, there's more than enough heat sinking going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down. And again, this is not super necessary. Um, unless your drive's been, you know, uh, sitting around for a long time. And then number two is just a dry wipe. And again, if you want to just use an alcohol wipe, you can do that. It's just basically just to get the grease and grime for, for maximum contact. In this particular case, this is a brand new drive and there's not a lot of stuff on this label. So to mount this, I'm just going to go ahead and take the supplied pad. And we're just going to basically pop it on top of the uh, the drive. Right about here. Make sure we cover all the chips. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the make sure you take the top plastic off. So to finish mounting this, we're just going to take the heat sink. And we're going to pop it right about here. We'll make sure it's nice and straight and just press down. Um, the stuff is sticky enough that it'll hold the heat sink on so it's not going to come off. And then you'll use the supplied bands. It's really simple to put on. Now some of these, um, I'll take your, draw your attention to some of these have metal clips like this which I think are a lot more secure but some of them have just the bands. Either way it works because there's not a lot of pressure going on here. So basically you're going to put three bands on. So we're going to do And there we have it. So we've mounted the heat sink, basically held on just strictly with these bands. And again, you can you can consider getting these with the clip, which basically mount, you know, very similar. They clips onto the um, clips onto the heat sink, and then on both sides, and holds the heat sink on. You'll find this actually does more than sufficient job. Um, some people may not like the look and would prefer to have the clips. Kind of like this one here. If you look at one of my other drives, this one actually has the metal clips. This happens to be an Aqua computer heatsink. It's a Cryo M. Um, this one actually is hard to find nowadays. They don't make it anymore, um, or at least they're out of stock. Uh, but this is an excellent heatsink as well. I've run this many times. But just to give you an example of how they mount. But for testing, and for now, we're going to use this one. Um, so we've got the heat sink on there, we've got the bands on there. We're now going to mount this thing back in the card. And there we have it. So now you're looking at the, the card um, with the heat sink mounted on the NVMe drive um, with the thermal pad underneath. So now it's time to run some testing and let's see how this guy performs. Okay, as you saw from the from the first run when we ran the uh, NVMe without the heatsink, we hit like 87 degrees. Now, um, 
just for for reference Samsung's data sheet shows the normal operating temperature at 0 to 70 degrees C and throttling to begin around 79 degrees. Now it doesn't mean it will throttle to notice anything but the the controller will start to throttle right around the 79 80 degree range. So we want to kind of idealistically you want to be below that temperature when you're operating. So let's run this test with the with the heatsink attached and let's see what kind of difference we get. Now, um, just to backtrack a little bit, I, I, the reason I picked the Evo Plus is because that's one of the drives that's probably most common nowadays. It's probably one of the best values out there. The pricing is very competitive with other cheaper drives, um, and it has one of the better performance curves. Um, also, keep in mind that if you're running a Samsung Pro, which I have in, in a couple of my systems, that runs even hotter. So if you have a 960 Pro, um, this actually runs even hotter. So, the uh, if you'll no if you'll notice on the screen that I do have a, a a 960 Pro in the system, but it since it already has a heat sink, it would be pointless to run it as a as any type of comparison. But they do run hotter, and you can even see at an idle temperature it's running hotter. So we'll t we'll take a look at the Evo Plus and see what happens when we hit this pretty hard with the same benchmark, and see what kind of Affect the heat sink has. Okay, so as you can see, just even with this extremely lightweight, um, very inexpensive heatsink, we've managed to drop the, the temperature down to around 69 degrees, which is uh, about 18 degrees less than what we were getting without a heatsink. And that's pretty significant because this benchmark actually um, thrashes the drive consistently. So it's constantly writing data to and from the drive, reading and writing. So it, it, it's probably more than what you would normally see on your everyday activity on your system. So to get this kind of performance from, you know, a cheap heat sink is pretty amazing. Obviously, if you used a better, thicker heat sink, you would even do better than this. Um, you know, but what I'm trying to demonstrate here is worst case scenario. And this is more than acceptable. This would, this is uh, doing a phenomenal job given the the size of the heat sink that's put on there. Now, obviously, you can choose whatever you want on there, and I'll, I'll put affiliate links to all of these to take a look at and see if there's anything that, you know, you want to find out more information about. However, you know, from my perspective, uh, virtually any heat sink that has any su substance to it at all will provide you some phenomenal results. So whatever one you get, um, I just recommend you get one. So in closing, um, take a look at your motherboard. If you're not, if you're running a motherboard without any type of heat sink at all, consider getting one of these. It's a very low cost upgrade and it's going to provide you a little bit of peace of mind. Um, there's um, always the debate of the labels and whether you should pull it off or not. And I'll let you guys decide whether you want to do that or not. For me, I'm leaving the label on, especially on Samsung drives. Um, I have pulled it off of some OEM drives where um, they used a paper label, which really didn't do much for me. I um, mean, it was an older drive, so I went ahead and pulled the label off. Um, but in terms of, you know, the most current Samsung drives, I usually leave the label on. But again, it's a warranty thing. It's up to you. If you want to get another couple degrees cooler, take it off. So I hope you've Enjoy this video. I hope it's answered some of your questions and thank you very much for tuning in and watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified of future content. See you next time.